Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so we were asked to share, and trust me, we didn't confide in each other, but somehow, you know, the way the Holy Spirit works, He, uh, the Spirit is one. I'm going to speak to you about faith also. about faith also and just add to what uh, Sharon has already shared I'm going to talk about a measure of faith so to each one of us God has given a measure of faith as believers let's look at uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 3 Chris can you put that up and this is Paul speaking to the Romans, about how God has given to each one of us a measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by grace given to me, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. So God has given to each one of you as believers a measure of faith. And um, I know we can each probably remember, those of us who have given a heart to the Lord, who are saved, uh, tongue talking, spirit filled, and uh, we can each remember when we had that encounter with the Lord. But prior to that, we either went to Sunday school, heard the word of God, so it was a build up. The seed of faith was sown in our heart over time, building up till that day when we finally see. And I can hear, I've heard testimonies where people say, I was just sitting in my room and something I just knew. I just wanted to give my heart to the Lord. I've heard people say, I was sitting in a service in my case. It wasn't an altar call. I was just sitting in church and the preacher was preaching. There was no altar call and I just knew I wanted to give my heart to the Lord. Prior to that, I've been to church. I've heard sermons. I've read the Bible. I've been, right? But I've never been committed. Like I was always one, like in one, like out. But I remember that exact day when I finally knew that this was it. I'm either in or out and I finally give my heart to the Lord. So God gives us a measure of faith. And why does God give us a measure of faith? Because we live in a kingdom where, as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, God has given us an inheritance, and the way we can possess our inheritance is when we exercise our measure of faith. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, uh, Pastor will always quote the scriptures. Giving thanks to the Father, who has uh, qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. He has called us out of darkness. He has rescued us from the dominion and oppression of the kingdom of darkness. And he has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. So we have an inheritance as children of God. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have an inheritance. So we have an inheritance in God that the way we can walk in those inheritances what when we choose to exercise our measure of faith and the more we exercise our measure of faith the more we grow in faith the more we become stronger the more we're more confident in believing the promises of god and we see them come to pass in our lives can we open uh Kirsch, can you put uh peter second peter chapter uh, two sorry chapter one verse two to three The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Peter that God's divine power has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. So, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God. And through what? Through the knowledge of God. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him 
who called us by his own glory and goodness. Can you put the next verse, please? Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in this world caused by evil desire. So God has given us this, uh, this inheritance that we have in his kingdom through promises that we read in the Bible. When we read the Bible, we, we hear God says, I'm the God that healed you of all the diseases. I'll give you peace. I'll give you joy. Psalm 103 talks about the benefits of serving God in the, being in his kingdom. And so God gives us all these promises. And they're what? They're through the knowledge of him in his word. The way we get to know who we are, the way we get to know how to participate in this inheritance is when we read the word, we know this word, and we exercise our faith, the measure of faith God has given to us. Now, if you live in this kingdom, if you've been in church long enough, you know that there's a devil somewhere out there who is not willing to let you be participate in what God has for you and the promises God has given you and the inheritance he has for you. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, Peter that he's like a roaring lion. He's going about looking for whom to walk. So the enemy is not just sitting there waiting for you to just walk into what God has planned for you, what he has prepared for you, and just enjoy it. No, he's going to contend with you. He's going to contend with you. Let's look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. God gave the children of Israel the promised land. But God said to them, you will have to contend for that land because your enemies will not just let you walk in and just take possession of it. You will have to contend for that land. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. See, I have given into your hand Simon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. So the enemy does not sit back. That's what Bob says. He's like a roaring lion. He's going back and forth. The reason why we go through the things we go through is because the enemy does wants us to doubt what God has promised us. He wants us to doubt the plans that God has for us. He doesn't want us to believe it, so he throws things, he throws things at us so that we can doubt. And trust me, unlike you and I as believers, sometimes we get tired of believing or, or walking in faith. He does not get tired. He's relentless. He is he, with his onslaught. He, will, he might give you a break, but he will come back again. Because he does not want you to walk in the inheritance that God has for you. Because he does not want you and I to know who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High God. So he comes at us with all that he got. But we as believers, sometimes we, we pray a little bit and then we get tired. We... Uh, we believe and believe and believe, like Cheryl had mentioned earlier, sometimes, especially when we have loved ones, they're waiting to, we're waiting to see them come into the kingdom, we get tired. We pray and pray at some point, and we get tired. But God is saying, we should what? Exercise our faith and believe. At the beginning, when we start exercising our faith, sometimes it was for the little things. And as we grow in our walk with God, sometimes the challenges are major because we have gone past that stage of being babies. Because God expects us to grow as his children. God expects us to mature as we walk with him. So sometimes the things that come at us might seem like they are enormous. How can I deal with this? But God knows that within us, God has put that seed of faith that over time grows and helps us to overcome the things we, we go through in life. And the Holy Spirit one time said to me, the measure of faith we're willing to exercise, like how much we're willing to trust God and believe God for, to that degree we will see God show up in our lives. We see him manifest or show up in our situations. Let's look at the story. There's a story in the Bible that I was reading. I've read that story. I've heard it preached so many times. And then a verse, verse 3 of that, where the story is, actually caught my eye. And it's the story of the woman with the two sons that went to see Elisha. It's in the book of 2 Kings. Second Kings chapter 4. 
4 verse 1 to 6. And I, uh, Curse, can you please put that scripture up? We're going to look at uh, this woman, and we're going to look at a few people who exercise a measure of faith and see and saw God come, come true for them. So the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And he said something, don't ask for just a few. Amen. Amen. He said, don't ask for just a few. In other words, don't put a limit to what this miracle or what God can do in this situation. Amen. Don't ask for just a few. And we know the rest of the story. When she went, she got the jars. He said, go lock yourself in the room with your boys. Pour this oil over and over again into all these pots. And she did. And can you go to verse uh, 5? This is verse 5. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and herself. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Next verse. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing because that was where her face could take her or that was where how far the number of jars she had. So the oil stopped flowing. So in as much as God has given us a measure of faith, we can believe God for the impossible. Let me put it that way. Jesus said to him that believe nothing shall be impossible. And so we, we can see God move in tremendous ways in our lives, in the lives of our children, in our marriages, in our place of work. We can see God do, but we have to be willing to exercise. We already have that seed of faith inside of us. We only need to build upon our seed of faith. And the more we exercise it, the more it grows, the greater it becomes, and the more confident we have in the Lord. The more we're able, and the more we experience God come through for us, beginning from the little things, the more we see him do greater things. I also believe that there are times, and Pastor talked about this last Sunday, that there are times in our lives where we do not have the faith to carry us through the things we go through. Sometimes it's hard, or we're overwhelmed, or sick, or we're not just strong enough. And that is where you and I, the body of believers, play a part. Amen. Because we can have people in our lives, or we have people, like I mentioned earlier, who are unbelievers. They don't know any better. So they need someone who knows better to stand in the gap for them. Amen. Let's look at verse... Uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 3. Courage, can you put that verse up? God said, I sought for a man that was standing in the gap. So we have people in our lives. They might be co-workers. They might be uh, just people that we know their situation, that we know that God needs to show up, needs to do something on their behalf. God speaking said, I looked for a man among them who, among them, amen. I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land, so I will not have to destroy. But I found none, amen. So there are situations sometimes in life, even sometimes as believers, where we're too overwhelmed to even pray. Or we have just people in our lives, especially for women, we're very compassionate. We, we, we love our kids and we love, I was saying to a co-worker the other day, I said, because of that instinct of women, we see other children, even situations that have nothing to do with us. And we have a tendency to be drawn into it because of that compassion in that. 
And I'm not saving any on our compassion, no. I'm just saying that women, there's something about us that draws us. And so God sometimes calls us, or we hear about situations. It might not be anybody related to us. It might not be even close to us. But there's a burden in our heart. And that is why God has called us. Each, each of us, you and I, we're each an intercessor. There's, there's, intercessors are not uh, like saints or being anointed with something different to pray. No, you and I are each called to pray. And God usually will raise someone from among them. Before you and I came to know the Lord, trust me, somebody somewhere was praying that we will get saved. Somebody somewhere, we might not know them, but one day we'll get to heaven and we will get to, there are people we pray for that is when we get to heaven, we will, we will, we will get to know that uh, we played a role in them getting to know the Lord. So you and I have been called to exercise our measure of faith on behalf of others. Amen. Because there are people who don't know any better. There are people in our families who don't know any better. There are people who are in a situation where they're too overwhelmed to pray. And like God was speaking here, said, I suffer. So God calls us. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a privilege, really, that God calls us to play a part in what he's doing in other people's life. It's an honor to, to, to partner with God, to see him do things in our community, in our nation, in, in, in the lives of other people. It is a privilege. So God has called us to pray. The book of James chapter 5 talks about Elijah, who was a man of like passion like you and I. So that means he was a, like you and I, like just a normal human being. He was an, an angel. And he prayed that it will, not play, uh, it will not rain in the land because of the sins of the people so that they can turn back to God. And it did not rain. One man put a whole nation at a standstill. So, and that is he exercised his faith. He chose to believe God for something to change, to be different. And when he did that, he believed God and it happened. I also think about uh, the story of Abraham when, when God called him. That is in the book of Genesis. When God was going to destroy Sodom and, um, and Gomorrah. That's why I said it is a privilege for, for us to partner with God, to see him do things in places. Because God said, would I do something without letting my servant Abraham know? Would I do a thing without him, letting him be aware of it? And Abraham came and said, God, would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he started to, I will say in this, at this point, standing in the gap on behalf of Sodom. And he said, if there were 50 people, righteous people, would you still destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And God said, no, if I find 50 people who are righteous, I will not do it. And he went to 45 and came all the way down to 10. And he stopped there. And I keep thinking, what if he had gone ahead and gone up to, say, one? Who knows? And I kept thinking also, so in the whole of Sodom, there was more 10 righteous people, the whole of that city, right? And at the end of the day, God, God still, the, the city was destroyed. But that is how God sees us. It was so important to him. We are, we are pre priests, we're princes and princes prince and princess of the Most High God. And God has given us such great opportunity that we could stand in the God, that we could pray and see him move in situation in our land, in our community, in our homes, in the lives of our children. Never to give up. Never, like Cheryl already touched on that. Never to give up when we pray. Never to think that, oh, it's not going to happen. We, when we read so many of the stories in the Bible, we see how God came through. Sometimes, after a long, long while, like I said earlier, the enemy is relentless. Amen. He does not want to give us a break. If he does, it's only for him to come back in full force. So we have to be, the Bible says we should resist him. We should resist the enemy. So it's not that God has not given us things like we read earlier. God has given us so many promises, so many beautiful things that we could partake of the of the inheritance he has given to us, that we can walk in the light of the, of the in the kingdom that he has given to us and, and be a part of what he's doing and, per, and take possession of what he has given to us. But we have to be willing on our end to exercise our measure of faith. We have to start from where we are. And God from the onset gave us a measure of faith we can build on. And the more we put our faith into action, the more we exercise it, the more we see God come through for us. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand?
So today we're going to pray, we're going to exercise our faith as believers. And we're going to pray for this town. And we're also going to pray for this nation. We're going to pray for the women in the house. There's many who are, I mean, we all look pretty and beautiful. But God sees our hearts. Amen. God only, only God knows what we're each dealing with and going through. And so I'm going to call Pastor John the board and call uh, Lorna and call Theresa. Actually, all the ladies, if you could please come forward. We're going to exercise really our prayer. We're going to pray and stand in the gap cool. for this community, this nation. That God. That God's will be done in our land. And the men, if you can come up, can you come up? If you can, if you're a man, can you come up behind to the altar there, please? I, I want, before we do some, anything else, uh, courage, and if you leave that, then just come up. Uh, Brenda, can you, I know you guys are busy, come up. Richard, up. Any, any man, Curtis, you're there with your boys, please bring them up. I, I want to do, I want something to happen. I don't know why, but I just, uh, we want to pray for the time. I want the women. I, are women, are you, are you guys going to turn towards us men on the altar? You're going to turn towards us men on the altar. You're going to turn towards us men. Greg, are you able to lead that for a minute? Okay. Uh, I want you to lead that prayer. I want you to pray. I want the women to just check what your hand towards the man. I want you to pray for your man. I want you to pray because the war is against the man. The, the single motherhood that we experience in our community, in our society, is just a war against women because the enemy wants to take out your man. He wants to take out your sons and your daughters, your husband, your grandfather, and, and the men are under such attack today like never before. And so I want the women to pray, and uh, Sister Teresa is going to write up that prayer, and then the men are going to pray for you, and then we'll pray for this community. Father, we know how the enemy wishes to attack the family, Father. The family is the foundation of society. And as the family goes, so goes the whole nation, Father. So goes the whole world. And Father, we know the family has been under duress. It's been under attack for, for a number of decades, Father. Perhaps since the beginning of time. But Father, we know the plans you have for families. We know, Father, that through, through
through uh, raising up uh, families, Father, through mutual respect within the home, Father, that you will raise up families that can be a blessing to the nation, Father. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that as women you give us wisdom, wisdom to know how to honor our husbands in such a way, Father, that they will feel lifted up. They will feel like they're mighty warriors to come against the enemy, Father. The enemy that would try to destroy not only them, but the, but the wives and the children and the whole fabric of society. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that you give them wisdom, Father. Give them a heart that wants to pursue you, Father, that wants to know you through the word, Father, so that they will know how to stand, Father. How to stand, Father, when every, anything in life assails them, Father. That, Father, that you... Father, will, will give them the heart of a lion, Father, so that they will know how to, how to face anything that comes before them, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that, that you give them understanding of their wives, Father, and Father, that they, you give them understanding for how to raise their children, Father. For the word says, provoke not your children, for you will discourage them. So, Father, I pray that you give the fathers hearts to encourage their their sons and their daughters, Father, so that they too will know how to be mighty men of God. And Father, I pray for the mothers today, Lord, that, uh, Father, that you give them tender hearts of compassion. And Father, that they, you give them hearts of understanding that will help to live up, lift up their husbands, Father, so that in this world that so wants to take out the family, Father, that they will, they will, they will, they will find strength within the home, Father, to, to live in a society that not only tempts them, but, but is out to destroy their very sense of manhood, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that they become, uh, that, that the women be such a source of encouragement, Lord, that, they're, that their men rise up, Father, that the men's hearts uh, will be totally turned towards uh, their wives and children and, and, and that the women's hearts will be totally towards their husbands and their children, Father. And this nation will be blessed, Father. This nation will be blessed because you will see the family raised up to be what it should be. And we thank you, Lord, for that blessing in your holy name. We pray. Amen. Father God, as men, as a source of security over our family, Father God, we stand, O oh God, over the women, not to lord it over them, but to be a shield, a covering. Father God, we stand, O oh God, one step above, not, O oh God, in pride, but in humility, that we will take the bullet for our family. Father God, we agree by faith, Lord, that will be a covering to your daughters that you have entrusted unto us, to the grandmother in the house that you have entrusted unto us, to that little niece, O oh God, that you have entrusted unto us, to this little lady that you have entrusted unto us, that every female, O oh God, that is in the house, O oh God, and in this community, Father God, we pledge to defend them in the law of Christ Jesus. Lord, that they will feel, Lord, they will feel accepted in the beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray not just for the women standing here, we pray for every woman in Grand Cash this morning. We speak of life into their heart in the name of Jesus. To that woman, oh God, that is alone by herself, feeling worthless, we speak peace and hope to her in the name of Jesus. We we'll speak to the women in Canada. We don't just pray for this nation. We pray for every woman called woman in this nation called Canada today. We ask your blessing upon them. As men, we speak over your destiny. We prophesy hope and, and peace and love and help unto you. For that God, we, keep, we declare healing to them that are sick as men this morning. We we'll speak to our wives and our mothers and our grandmothers. We curse, oh God, every 
permanent breast cancer that is tormenting their life in the name of Jesus. We come against ovarian cancer. We come every form of cancer that is coming against the women in the name of Jesus. As we celebrate our mothers today, as we celebrate our grandmothers, our sisters and aunties and, and our fiancés and, and everything called women in this society today, we speak the blessings of God over you. We speak blessings over this nation. We speak blessings over this community in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt your name. May every woman here feel encouraged. May every woman here receive the faith, O oh God, to push ahead. May every woman here, Father God, receive strength to try just one more. Just one more. Just this once, Father God. Strengthen them from above in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the service of today. We thank you for Esther. We thank you for Sharon. We thank you for using them. We thank you for Sister Malavi. We thank you for Roberta. We thank you for everyone that has been part of this service today. Father, we thank you for every word they have brought. We receive it with thanksgiving and we say, Lord, may you pour more into their life that they shall continue to be a blessing to everyone in their family and the church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, Father, we bless the food. We receive it with thanksgiving. And uh, we serve each other in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we thank God for another new baby that is here. Amen. Awesome baby.